Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to enable and use the Windows subsystem for Linux and Bash terminal on Windows 10. Now I'm pretty new to this, so I'm not going to go too in depth. I just want to kind of show you guys how to get it set up and running. I've had a lot of requests for it. It's not something I'm going to say you definitely need to use, but I think it is worth looking into. Uh, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you've probably seen me use Git Bash quite a bit for my terminal. There's a few reasons for that. One, it does everything I need it to do. It's very easy to use. Um, most of all, it's easy for other people, for, for uh, uh, students and viewers to get set up if they're using Windows. Obviously, if they're using Mac or, or Linux, they already have a Bash terminal. But if you're on Windows, you can just simply download and install it and you're all set. Um, it's much easier than having to go through this whole process every time I want to explain to them how to get Bash on Windows. All right, but with that said, you this may work out for you. You may like it. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to use it, but I did want to do a tutorial on it. All right, now this isn't like using SigWin or a virtual machine or anything like that. It's an actual Linux subsystem that runs inside of Windows 10. You have access to the apt-get pack package manager. Um, you have to run sudo to run, run commands as admin. It's basically just Linux on Windows. All right, so I'm not advocating for it. I'm not saying use it. I'm not saying don't use it. If you want to fight amongst yourselves about what to use, that's fine if it's good or bad. But this is a completely unbiased tutorial. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing we're going to do is go to the settings in Windows 10. And we're going to go down to the update and security icon. And from here on the left here, you'll see the four developers option. We're going to click that and we're going to choose developer mode. All right, we're going to say yes. And if you've never used developer mode, it might take a minute or two to get everything set up. You might see a little uh, preloader thing here and it might take a little bit, but um, it'll get set up eventually. So once that's done, you just want to go to your control panel and go to programs. And then this option right here, turn Windows features on and off. You're going to click that and then scroll down to where it says Windows subsystem for Linux and you want to check that off and hit OK. OK, once you do that, you're going to have to reboot your machine or in my case, my virtual machine. So I'm going to click restart now and I'll be back once this is restarted. All right, so we have the machine restarted. So now what I'm going to do is go down and just search for bash and you're going to see this come up bash run command. So I'm going to click that. And then this window will open up and it says that the Windows subsystem for Linux has no installed distributions. So we have the subsystem set up. We just don't have an actual Linux distribution. Now, back when I, I dabbled with this before, I'm pretty sure that Ubuntu came pre-installed with it. But now you actually have to install it uh, because there's actually multiple distros that you can use now. I think OpenSUSE is one of them. Um, that may be it or there might be more. I'm not I'm not exactly sure, uh, but we're going to use Ubuntu. So we're going to go ahead and close this. It's basically just telling us to visit the Windows store and download it. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and go to the store, Windows store, Microsoft store, whatever. And we're going to search for Ubuntu. All right, so click on it right here and we're going to install it. Obviously, you'll have to log in if you're not logged into Microsoft. And it should only take a couple seconds. And you can see right here, OpenSUSE Leap. Uh, that's also available. Uh, OpenSUSE or SUSE Linux Enterprise Server. So let's go ahead and launch this. And now you're going to get a window with a little Ubuntu icon that says installing May This may take a few minutes and it will. So what I'm going to do is just um, I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back when this is done. All right, so that's all set. Now what's going to happen is it's going to ask us to create a new Linux username or a new Unix username. And this is completely separate from your Windows username. So I'm just going to say Brad and it's going to ask us to enter a password or create a password rather. And now we have a new Unix user called Brad. OK, so we basically are in Linux right now. We need to run sudo to use root commands. We can use the apt get package manager. We can do pretty much anything that you can do inside of a, a Linux terminal. Now, 
before we go and update our packages and all that, I just want to talk a little bit about the system, about the file system. So right now we're in the user folder of the, the Linux subsystem. If I do an LS, there's nothing here. It's just empty. Uh, if I do a CD slash, it's going to take us to the root of the Linux uh, file system. You can see we have our Etsy folder, our home folder, the var, the user, the mount. Now this mount, this MN MNT, this is where the Windows file system is located. If you're going to do stuff um, to Windows files from Linux from here, then you want to go to the mount folder. So CD mount. And if we take a look at what's in here, there is a C folder. So this is basically your Windows C drive. If I go LS into C, I'm sorry, CD into C, and then we do an LS. You can see pro, uh, program files and users, and this is just the, the basically my C drive. Okay, if I wanted to go to my my Windows users folder, I could say CD users slash Brad, and let's go into the projects folder there, or maybe I don't have a projects folder. Let's see, CD users and CD Brad. And let's see, oh, uppercase P projects. All right, so from here, I could start to, I could open up Angular app or client panel or any of these, these folders, these applications, and I could work on them from here. Um, what you don't want to do is work on Linux folder or Linux files from Windows. And that's a, a big mistake that I made in the first video I did. A lot of you may have seen that I deleted it because what I did is I created inside my Linux home directory a folder and then I opened it inside of VS Code, which is a Windows tool. And you don't want to do that. That can actually cause data corruption. So um, I deleted that because I don't want to be responsible for corrupting anyone's data. Um, but you don't want to do that. So now what I'm going to do is just clear this out with control L and you probably want to update your packages and upgrade. So let's do a sudo. Uh, we're going to say sudo apt update and put our password in. Uh, whoops, what did I, oh, I put two D's in there. Okay, so this is going to update all of our packages. Once this is done, we're going to run our upgrade command, which will take a lot longer. But that'll upgrade anything that needs to be updated. All right, so now we'll clear this out and we'll run sudo apt upgrade. And we'll say yes. And this is going to take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is pause the video and I'll be back when it's done. All right, guys. So that is all set. That took quite a while. I'd say about maybe five, six minutes or so. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this out. Now we can install stuff um, from our package manager. For instance, if we wanted to install HTOP, which is a Linux task manager, we could go ahead and say sudo apt install and we'll say htop okay it gives us a little progress bar down at the bottom and now we can go ahead and run that we'll say htop and you see we have our linux based task manager now there's no kernel there's no actual Linux kernel with this subsystem, so this isn't going to show us too much. It's basically showing us the init. It's showing us that we're running bash and it's showing us that we're running htop. But it's just an example of showing you that we can run Linux based programs now in Windows. All right, so we're going to go ahead and exit that with control C and Another thing we can do easily now is SSH into servers. Um, so if you had like a DigitalOcean droplet or something like that with an IP address, you could easily SSH into it. I'm just going to say SSH into my local host. Obviously, this would be a remote connection, but just for just to show you how easy it is. And we'll put in the password. And now we SSH into our local host. OK, so it's as easy as that. No putty, anything like that. And then we could just do exit to get out of it. 
Now, if you're in just the standard Windows command line, so if I go to CMD and open that up, all I, now all I have to do is type in bash and it will switch to bash. And you'll see now it's in it's actually in the mount C users Brad. All right, we can do whatever we want from here now. And if we want to get out of it, we can just say exit. Now, another thing that you can do is you can actually integrate bash with hyper, which is just a fantastic terminal with a whole bunch of nice plugins and themes. And um, you can have new tabs and all that stuff. This is just a default installation, but uh, I'm going to make a video on this pretty soon. But if you wanted to use it, with hyper you can see it's just using the regular windows command line but if we go to edit and uh, preferences and we go down to where it says shell which is right here you can see how it's empty it actually gives you an example this bash on windows the location is in windows system 32 bash exe so what i'll do is just copy that and put that right in here and we'll save it close this up and then reload hyper And now we should now you can see that we're actually using bash in hyper. All right. So very helpful. Um, another thing, if you wanted to use it in Visual Studio Code, which has an integrated terminal, which is just awesome. If we hit uh, control back tick, that will toggle it. And you can see it uses Windows PowerShell by default, obviously, if you're in Windows. And if we want to change that, we can go to our preferences and then settings. And let's just search for terminal and it's all the way at the bottom here. So you can see that by default terminal integrated shell windows is using PowerShell. But what I'm going to do is just click edit and then copy to settings, which puts it over here. And we're going to change the program to Windows System 32 and then bash dot exe and save. And we'll close this up. And now if I scrap this terminal with the trash icon and then open it again with control back tick, it should use bash. OK, and you can see it actually opened it in the project I'm in, which is this Angular app project, which is from my Angular course. And notice that it's in the Mount C uh, users Brad projects folder. All right. So now we have bash enabled in VS Code in hyper. We can install Linux tools, so there's a lot there's a lot more you can do, obviously. Um, but like I said, I mean, it's up to you if you want to use this or if you want to use something like Commander or Git Bash, um, which I think is is fine for most situations, um, especially for me as a content creator, for me as someone that, um, you know, there are beginners that watch that what I just did would confuse the absolute shit out of them. Um, it's much easier for me to tell them to download Git Bash. So just keep that in mind, guys. Um, you know, when, when you see me not using a tool that maybe you would use, you have to think of that, that other people are watching what I'm doing and they have to understand it. All right. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a like and I will see you next time.